Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 44. This one is a prepreg carbon panel with Roacell cord ribs or stiffeners on it with a little bit of uni capping on the stiffeners. It's a pretty straightforward layup for the panel. The outermost ply is a 200 gram twill and I'm just rough cutting stuff to size here to make about a 16 inch by 16 inch piece just to make use of this scrap that I have. It's getting laminated on a warm somewhat flexible table. The aluminum sheet here has got a 3D printer bed heater on the bottom and uh, adhesive Teflon surfacing on the top. And so now I've got these first two plies down, a 200 gram twill and a 300 gram uni, using a spiky roller to make little holes in the backer on that uni, and then doing a quick debulk bag here. And I'm putting pleats in it that will accommodate the ribs uh, once those are there, just leaving room for those pieces of foam in the bag. Taking the debulk bag off that first layer, going to pull the backer. I've laid out on tape roughly what I'm going to do. Um, kind of sloppy. The ribs are going to be four inches apart and I'm laying those out on tape just so I'll be able to find the centers. Marking them across and um, going to peel that backer off. These are strips of 300 gram uni that are going to go in the panel under where the foam ribs, stringers are going to go. Uh, these are doubled up and just ever so slightly offset so there's not a sharp edge where the stack stops. And the middle ply here is this 400 gram double bias prepreg. And this has got a little more resin than the uni or the woven. It's, it's a, a stitched um, non crimp and the fiber runs roughly these directions. Here's a close-up look at it. You can see the stitching and the resin on the surface. The piece I have here is not as big, uh, not quite as wide, so I'm just making sure it fits and cutting off the scrap. This feels much stickier than the Uni. You can tell the extra resin in there. Uh, I'm going to give this a debulk and that, that uh, double bias is going to end up being the, the middle ply, effectively, of this panel. So it will not be perfectly symmetrical, but um, it's got ribs on it, and the outermost ply will not be symmetrical either because it goes up and over the ribs. So you can see those stacks of uni showing there, and um, this is the glue film that's going to go down just to provide some extra resin to bond those foam ribs. and. I'm going to debulk this using some scrap backer from the uni, giving it perforations with the spiky wheel and a quick debulk. I'm doing this pretty quick and dirty. There's uh, a lot more you could do to make a layup like this neat. So here's the Roacell, the ribs. This is a PMI foam. I profiled it to that shape on a table saw and with a sanding block. Nothing fancy. I'm going to lay these out neatly so that they aren't making triangles. And here's a look at the row of cells, a PMI core. It's really nice, very expensive material. That's why I don't have much of it. These are all offcuts. And um, here's a look at some of the 75 kilo, very lightweight. And it's very brittle. You can shave it, cut it, carve it, and it feels. Um, almost ceramic-like in its hardness. This is a high-density piece. I'm not sure what this is. I just had it around, but you can carve it. Um, it feels much different than um, some of this other stuff. It's pretty stiff, quite brittle, especially compared to the uh, Gurit M foam, the yellow stuff, and um, Here's just a look at the data sheet properties of a couple of common 80 kilo foams. Here's a Gurit M foam. 
Core cell, uh, definitely much rubberier. And the Airx C7075. I'm going to cut these ribs to length just so they're not hanging out over the material. Placing them on top of that glue film, trying to make sure it's as neat as possible. And I was thinking to put the glue film on top, but it's kind of a hassle to do. It's really a lot easier to co-apply the glue film with the layer of prepreg that's going to go on top. So just adding the resin there. And in an ideal world, these would be vacuum bagged together. But here I'm just sticking them on there and using the heat from my hand to roughly work the air out. But you can see this backer coming off. And as I touch it with my fingers, you, you can see it get dark. Uh, the air is getting worked out. Something thick, you definitely want to make sure the air is worked out of that interface between the glue film and the prepreg. Using a little rub stick here to push it into the corners to make sure there's no bridging. And these little strips of uni are essentially capping um, to go on top of the little beams formed by these stringers. And I'm just stacking two plies here. You know, could be substantially neater. And um, you just did things like this. Want to offset the edges ever so slightly so that you don't end up with steps. And I'm stacking these up and going to give it a quick debulk using all the extra bag and um, hammering it in there with that rub stick. Finish with the debulk, cleaning up a little bit of messy ends on that uni. And the final ply is another RC200, uh, 200 gram twill, which I'm going to attempt to put in keeping the diagonal ribbon on the twill relatively consistent. If you're very careful with prepreg, you can line the pieces of twill up so that it looks almost like one piece and um, takes some fussing because it's not completely uniform and you have to stretch it a little bit here and there. But there's usually enough flexibility with the crimp and um, to get a pretty nicely aligned set of plies. And you can see that line here that's formed by the 45 of the, uh, the, the two under, two over, the two by two twill. And um, that's a really nice visual element to make sure that you get right on things that are gonna be finished clear because it just makes it look way better. These are strips of peel ply here, which I am laying slip jointed into the corners. If I were to run them up and over, it would bridge in the corner and I wouldn't be able to get good pressure in there. It might show through on the other side or have voids or pull excess resin out. It's really important to do that. Um, here's a look at this little cutter I'm using. It's an electric shear. There's a newer version of this that's, I think a WBT2 has a better battery, but this one's great. And they're um, just super handy for cutting things, especially peel ply. Gonna get rid of that old debulk bag, clean up all this peel ply here. And for a breather and bleeder layer, I'm gonna use some woven e-glass with a P3 perforated release film on it, that's the blue. I'm going to cut that into strips exactly the same way I did the peel ply, leaving a slip joint with about a half inch, 12 milliliter overlap in those corners, just enough that not gonna get excess bleed through, but also not doubling up and blocking all of the holes in the release film. And around the outside edge, I'm gonna just put a little bit of infusion flow media just as a manifold. This e-glass cloth as a breather bleeder um, loads up pretty quickly. And um, putting down the fittings, this one goes through the side of the bag on top of some sealant tape, it has an opening on the bottom. And the other one, the plate, I've put on a piece of bag film slipped in there to keep resin from getting into it. Bagging this up, trying to make sure I've got excess bag in all the corners. And checking 
for leaks. Making sure it's a pretty good bag. I had a little bit of a fight with the fitting on the vacuum side. Ended up changing hoses a bunch and finding a bad fitting. This got cooked on top of that heated plate. Just piled some breather fabric on top and ramped it up and gave it a cook about 110 C. So removing those fittings, you can see all of the, the ends that I went through trying to find one that worked. There's quite a bit of resin taken up in this e-glass cloth. It works really nicely for this. And I didn't have any thin breather around. Pop this off with a wedge and it looks pretty good. You can see the laps showing through there where the extra is built up over the stringers. And it turned out pretty flat once I trimmed it up. It's a little bit of carbon dust in the end of that row of cell. But you can see the, the laps there with that biax over the top. And um, peeling off this peel ply. Not perfect, but it lines up okay, the twill. You can hear the difference between the cord area. The weight is 396 grams, 13 and an eighth ounces. And here's a quick look at the thermal conductivity of cord versus single skin. You can see the heat radiates into the cord section and stays stuck in the single skin area. So look at that stringer and cross section. You can see the capping. Here I poured a little acetone on top just to show the twill. Overall, it's a nice way to add some stiffness to a panel without some of the problems that come with making it fully cord. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you on the next one.